Conquering the Rock Cycle, starring Oxy-10, the molecule who wanted to do more than just breathe. Oxy-10 was a simple young oxygen molecule who lived with his father in the mantle of the earth. When Oxy-10 was old enough to take care of himself, his father left on a quest to take on the fabled rock cycle, the cycle between igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic rocks that occurs in the Earth's lithosphere. Time had passed since his father had ventured forth, and Oxy-10 was enjoying living a carefree life, when one day he was walking by the river of magma that flowed by his home, and lo and behold, he saw his father drifting down the river of magma. My son, his father said, I have failed the rock cycle, and as punishment, I am to be melted back into the magma from whence we all came. My quest now falls to you, my son, to take up my silicon armor and find my horse, Ojen, and succeed where I have fallen. Seek out the quartzite knights, for they above all can help you conquer and survive the test of time. Heartbroken but determined, Oxytan did as his father bade him, and took up his silicon armor and found his trusty horse Ogen not far from where the boundary of the lithosphere loomed large. Now encased as a quartz grain warrior, Oxytan rode the hot currents of the magma chamber up, up, and up, towards the lithosphere and the surface of the earth. As the magma chamber cooled, many of those others on similar quests began to fall to the dangers of the journey, but Oxytan persevered. First, he faced the malicious Mafic monster. Next, he survived the plague of the inhibitory intermediate insects. And finally, he began to rise up to where few others remained, except determined quartz grain warriors like himself, and also those grain warriors of the tribes of Biotite and Feldspar. But alas, the next challenge was too great for Oxytan and his companions and they were struck down by the BFG, the Big Felsic Moment. The BFG did throw them into an igneous, crystallized prison, sealing them up, doomed to be frozen there for millennia. Oxytan, looking at his father's beaten and bruised armor, sat crystallized thus and wept for he feared that he had failed his father's last wish, and he prayed for some way to redeem himself and his father's honor. And lo, the spirit of the wind heard Oxytan's prayers, and blew mighty gusts of wind in the direction of the granite mountains, eventually breaking apart some of the crystalline structures, freeing Oxytan and several others, who conglomerated together as they rolled down mountains to freedom. After a long journey, the conglomerate of former prisoners had eroded apart over time, and Oxytan was again alone. He found himself on a beach overlooking a vast ocean, depressed with how far he had fallen. Oxytan found himself in the company of others just like him, quartz grains who had failed to endure the igneous challenges of the rock cycle, and who had settled here and had begun to class together to form Aranite communities. Oxytan could find no escape from his depression, and wandered here and there along the beaches, eventually joining a quartz Aranite, and resigning himself to live a seven sedimentary lifestyle in the land of the sandstones. It was here that the spirit of the water, sister of the wind spirit, found Oxytan and spoke to him in gentle waves rebuilding his confidence and refreshing his sense of pride. The spirit convinced Oxytan that he had become well-rounded enough to return to the rock cycle once again. Hardened by this, Oxytan convinced some of his fellows to join him, and into the water they transported themselves. 
vaults, and they were carried down, down, to the bottom of the ocean, near a deep trench. It was here, as the oceanic crust was being pulled and subducted down deep into the earth, Occitan saw that there were other sandstones there, many just like him. As the subduction continued, and the temperature began to rise, Occitan remembered how his father had looked when he melted into the magma, and realized that in order to avoid the same fate that he had to metamorphose, to change himself into something more resistant than sandstone. Occitan worked to organize the quartz aronites into alignment with each other, so they would better survive the great pressures they were under. As the subduction continued further, the fluids that had come down with them from the ocean were heated because they were getting closer to the mantle and the Earth's core. This continued over time, until at last Occitan and his fellows reached a group of strange-looking grain warriors who revealed that they were the quartzite knights of the granoblastic table, and that because the sandstones had aligned together so closely, they would not be melted back into the magma, but would rather be forged anew into metamorphic rocks, into quartzite knights. After what felt like billions of years, Occitan and the other quartzite knights joined together, stronger than any force around them, biding their time and waiting, waiting for a time of uplifting, when they might rise to the surface once again, to expose their might and their glory to all those who might seek to outlast them. Thus ends the tale of Occitan, Quartzite.